Hey guys, it's Kevin again, my review for the latest masterpiece from Tyler the Perry, of course, known as A Fall From Grace. And what A Fall From Grace is essentially about is basically we center on this attorney who, she is someone who is kind of in a place where she doesn't really want to do this anymore, but she's taking on this case from this woman named Grace Waters, who pretty much everyone feels is a open and shut case. They think it's pretty clear that she murdered her husband and that she is a cold-blooded killer and things like that. However, uh, it is through, as the film goes on, it's clear that this attorney feels differently and she is to try to prove why this woman is in innocent and all the trauma that she's really been through and that's really all I'm gonna say. So, A Fall From Grace. I mean, obviously, I, knowing my history with Tyler Perry, knowing how much I have hated his other films, I obviously was very much dreading this film. I mean, just the fact that this is the first Netflix release we get of the new decade after they've had all these, like, Oscar hits and things like that is very disappointing, to say the least, but also just knowing what this film was going to be, because Tyler Perry rarely does anything original, and I've just gotten to the point where I've grown very numb to it. Um, I knew that this was going to be probably something really bad for sure, um, but I knew I had to watch it, because, you know, I watch everything, and, uh... You guys seem to enjoy my, my, you know, inner rage against this, this director. And, you know, he just recycles the same storylines and, you know, does the same sort of stuff all the time where he is portraying these very problematic characters and having this very inaccurate portrayal of, like, women and things like that and just stereotypes. And so when it comes to this movie, it should not be a surprise to you that this is no different. Uh, a Fall from Grace is very easily the worst film that I have seen so far this year. It's, this is every bit as offensive, this is every bit as boring, it's every bit as over the top as every Tyler Perry film has ever been, and similar to most Tyler Perry films, most of the cast here is fucking awful. Uh, there's not a lot of really good acting in this movie, Believe it or not, though, there is one really good performance here that I actually can say I thought did a good job, and that's Brisha Webb. Brisha Webb plays, I guess, our main character in the movie. She's the attorney that is on Grace Waters case, and she was the only performance in the movie that I felt like actually wanted to be there. She was the only actress that felt like she was actually trying to put something into this, and I actually thought she did a pretty solid job here. Whenever she was on screen, the movie was a little bit more tolerable than what was going on, um, and I thought overall she definitely did do a solid job in the film. Her character, she doesn't have that much of a character but I think she does elevate it overall, and uh, I did like her uh, for the most part here. The rest of the cast, though, oh, fuck no. Everyone else here is absolute trash in this movie. Let's talk about Crystal Fox, who plays uh, the title character. Crystal Fox is an actress that I have liked in things before. I thought she was really good in the last season of Big Little Lies, but I don't know what she's doing here. She seems to have two kinds of acting in this movie. She's constantly in the film fluctuating between sounding incredibly bored and sounding like she doesn't give a shit, or she's overacting to the point of absurdity. She's overacting to the point where it's honestly kind of hard to watch because you can just tell she's not really trying at all. She's just, uh, it's really hard to watch. And I, I just thought she really brought this entire film down. In the scenes where she's supposed to be expressing emotion, it's too much emotion. And the scenes where she's supposed to be a little bit more like, um, you know, a little bit more, I would say, subdued. It's too subdued. She couldn't seem to find that happy medium, and I don't know if I if I attribute that to just her or Tyler Perry's directing, but it was a really bad performance for sure, and I thought she did a really bad job here. And there's a lot of things that made this film very hard to watch, but considering that she's our title character, uh, it took me out of the movie very often, and it's easily one of the worst things about this film. Definitely one of the worst performances, maybe the worst performance I've seen so far this year. The rest of the cast as well uh, really does some really terrible work here. Uh, Felicia Rashad, I usually like quite a bit, but here she's again just really overacting and it doesn't really seem like she wants to be here. Makad Brooks is laughably bad in this movie. He's so miscasted here. It really doesn't seem like he knows what he's doing very much at all. It doesn't help that him and Crystal Fox have zero chemistry whatsoever, and I just did not think he was good here 
there very much, uh, especially in the scenes where he starts to go into the more, you know, where you expect that character to go. He did a really unconvincing job with that, and I just did not think he was good here at all. Um, even Tyler Perry himself, who's in this movie, honestly didn't even feel like a performance. Like, there were scenes, I was watching this with a friend on, on, uh, on cast and things like that, and I kept saying to him, like, this does not feel like it's a scripted scene. This literally feels like Tyler Perry was directing the movie and just randomly put himself in here. There are lines that he says that doesn't sound like it's coming from the character. It's coming from Tyler Perry himself. He's frustrated. He's angry. He's kind of a douchebag. He's kind of a dick throughout this whole thing. He's just the asshole boss. That's kind of all he's playing here, and uh, it's a very, very one-note role. And I've said it before, Tyler Perry is not a bad actor. I've seen him give some really strong performances, but this is exactly the kind of stuff he needs to steer away from. He's far better when he's playing a character he has not written for himself, and it very much does show here. I don't, I really don't understand why he feels the need to put himself into every single movie. It honestly comes across as really self-indulgent and really pisses me off, but whatever. He does it anyway, and uh, it's still really bad here, as is basically everyone here. And now we get to the stuff that I know you guys really want me to talk about, the directing and the writing here, which... Holy shit, I mean, look, again, if you've seen my reviews for other Tyler the Perry films, I'm going to sound very repetitive here. I'm going to keep regurgitating the same things I've said in other reviews of his. But honestly, there's not a lot to say that's new here, because, and that's the biggest problem, is that Tyler Perry offers almost nothing different to this film. And I'll just tell you right now, out of all of the ones he's done, this is the one that feels like it has the least amount of a vision. There is no vision in this film. There is no sort of passion in this whatsoever. This is just Tyler Perry needed a, a movie to come out this year. He did a Medea family funeral, he put that character to rest, and he knows that he has to keep continuing because he just can't stop. He just has to keep milking the fuck out of these movies that nobody cares about. Um, but he decided that he'd do it with this film, and... It really does show. The moments that are supposed to be authentic, they come across as almost a soap opera. They're so over the top and ridiculous, and you can just tell that if, if this was in the hands of a more capable director, this maybe actually could have worked, but because Tyler Perry gave so little shits during this movie, and it's so obvious that he did... That's where the directing comes across so tone-deaf in that way. Uh, there's so many moments that just fall so incredibly flat here, and I just think it, it, it... I don't know if it's his worst directed film, because to be honest with you, it's very hard to say, like, this is his worst directed film, but I would probably put this on par with Butu a Medea Halloween, honestly, because... That's the that is probably I think still the laziest film he's done, but this comes pretty damn close. And uh, especially the fact that this film was shot in five days, which I'll get into in a little bit, because trust me, I have a lot to say there. Um, you can really tell just how little he cared about this movie, and it really does show. But the writing here is absolutely atrocious. I mean, this is easily one of his worst screenplays to date, and it's not even just because he's essentially doing the same thing. That is the least of this movie's problems. Yes, that is definitely a big issue with it, but I think the biggest issue of all is the way it actually handles this story, because I'm not going to lie to you, the first 20 minutes or so, I actually wasn't hating. I was like, what the fuck? I'm actually kind of liking this. We focused on a attorney character, which I thought was kind of refreshing because you would expect for Crystal Fox to be the main character here. But for a while, Brisha Webb is the main character. Her um, being very trepidatious about taking on this case and her kind of wanting to not be a lawyer anymore. You know, this is something that she just doesn't really want to do anymore because she's seen a lot and it's really altered her and she doesn't really know if she can handle something like this anymore, and I actually thought that was really good. The way they were kind of showing the way that the media was portraying Grace and things like that, I actually thought was pretty effective, and I liked where they were going with that, and then the very second that she meets Grace, the movie just screeches to a halt after that. It screeches to a halt, and that's when it becomes what you'd expect out of a Tyler Perry movie. And again, I shouldn't be disappointed, but I do think this concept had a lot of potential because a lot of the movie should have been about is Grace someone that we can trust or not? Is she actually capable of 
doing this stuff. The problem is we don't really get to see the side of someone that feels that like, oh yeah, she's definitely a murderer. You know, there's no other sort of options here. And every time we do, they're portrayed as a villain. They're portrayed as someone that is against her. But if you see the way Grace acts in the movie, there's not a lot of evidence to suggest that she isn't, you know, crazy. That she isn't someone that did all these terrible things. I mean, even when we go to the flashbacks, the way she reacts to things is just ridiculous. It's so cartoony and over the top. And no act rational human being would act this way. And at least in something like Acrimony, which I still really fucking hate, they at least try to give her some kind of a diagnosis is there. Here, they try to make it feel like she's like a victim or something like that, which I mean, considering what she goes through, yes, she is, but still, the way she's acting in this situation, it just... It's not a way a rational human being would act, and that's the biggest problem with Tyler Perry, is that he doesn't know how to write authentic realistic characters, so it comes across as super problematic, and I think this is one of the best examples of it, for sure. It also doesn't help, like I said before, that the actual story of, like, what Grace has been through is not very interesting at all and kind of makes her look really stupid. Like, it's pretty obvious from the start what's going on. And, again, her and this, this guy that she ends up with... There's just no chemistry there whatsoever, so it's very hard to buy into the fact that this guy would ever be on her side, would ever have any interest in her whatsoever. It just, I didn't buy it for a second. There wasn't a, a single moment in this movie where I'm like, yeah, I see the chemistry between these two. Yeah, I can buy why they'd be in a relationship. No, it just felt like the most lifetimey, over-the-top, just like... Uh, forced shit to me like I just did not buy it at all and it really brings a significant portion of this movie down for sure but then like I said when you get more into what's going on you really just realize just how one-sided this whole thing is and that's my biggest issue with this film every single character the Brescia Webb's character comes across is on Grace's side like I said the only people we don't get to see um, are the people who are firmly opposed to her and I've said it before, the best films like this present both arguments, and they're able to show why someone would feel this way. But Tyler Perry is not interested in that. He's interested in a very one-sided narrative, and it very much does show. And I think my biggest issue with this entire movie is that there is no storytelling here. There really is not. Any sort of stuff like with Brescia Webb and her like not wanting to be an attorney drops. They don't ever go into it again. Uh, there's a scene in the beginning where her husband's a police officer, and he has to save this woman from this very um, you know traumatic situation. Dropped. Never discussed again any sort of room for nice, you know, authentic conversation between characters is something that Perry is just not interested in doing. What he is interested in doing is shocking you, in making you so, um, you know, enraged by what's going on. It's pretty clear that he just does not care about delivering a solid story here, and between the dialogue, which is so, it's either so cheesy or it's so implausible, or the screenplay, which is just so boring, he really does a terrible job in making you care at all about what's going on. Not to mention where he ends up going with this movie in the third act may just be his worst twist I have ever seen from him. And that's saying a lot, because this man has turned out some truly awful twists, but I don't think any of them come even remotely close to what we get in A Fall From Grace. Because A Fall From Grace, like I said, throughout the movie it feels pretty straightforward. And then literally the last 10 minutes, not even the last 20 minutes, the last 10 minutes of this movie, he throws this huge bombshell on you. This huge bombshell that's supposed to tie everything together, and it just makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, and it really just seemed like he did this because it would give him the ending that he wanted. Not because it actually made sense, but because he knew how he wanted to end this movie, and so he randomly cobbled this together, not caring if it made any sense, not caring if it worked for the story, and just threw it in there. And it really, really does show here, and I, I truly do think it might just be his worst twist yet, because... Even thinking about it, there is not a single thing here that I buy into, and it's one of those twists where the more you think about it, the more you're going to hate this movie, and 
That's really what makes me hate this one, is just how little of a shit he cared about this screenplay. Because, yeah, obviously, there's a lot of problematic stereotypes, there's a lot of things here that just really aren't great about this movie. The way they handle Grace is really bad. All the characters in this movie are really bad. Even Brescia Webb's character, after a while, gets really bad. You don't understand why she thinks Grace is innocent. You don't understand why she's buying everything this woman is saying. Like, there's no alternate point of view, and she's kind of like, oh, maybe Grace isn't on the right side. I think she's just always firmly by her, and I don't understand it. Even though, yes, we know what Grace is telling her, how do we know that it's true? How do we know that this is actually factual? I mean, again, there are people who think this woman is a psychopath, and there are certain scenes in the movie where you kind of do buy into it. I'm not saying that Grace is a mass murderer or anything like that, but again, they don't do a good job of showing the rationale in this woman, showing why she'd do the things she did. It just, it doesn't make sense at all, and I think that's the biggest issue with this screenplay, is just, there's no effort here to try to make this anything more than what it is, and I think that's really what brings it down. It's just getting so tired after, at this point, and it really just doesn't feel like Perry knows what he wants to do anymore. It, it doesn't even feel like he wants to do this anymore, and it, it very much does show here. And like I said, the courtroom scenes in this movie were really infuriating to me. Again, I understand that our main character is supposed to be on her side, and the film is trying to say something about, like, abusive relationships and things like that, but to be honest, everything that those law officials say, the other lawyers, there's really nothing, at least the film gives you, to suggest that she hasn't done it. There's no evidence whatsoever. It's just, for some reason, she believes that Grace has not done what she's been accused of doing. And I just don't understand it at all. The film could have easily given us something that could make us doubt it. Something that could be like a whole. But they don't do any of that until literally the last ten minutes of this movie. And it just makes those courtroom scenes so hard to watch. The people you're supposed to be rooting against, you're kind of rooting for. You don't understand why anyone would be supporting this one, why anyone else would think this isn't so, just a straightforward sort of narrative, because there isn't really a lot to suggest that she hasn't killed her husband. There isn't a lot to really do that, and Again, I, I, I'm not saying that what the husband did, obviously, is, is right. I mean, this is a terrible, it, very problematic relationship. The things that he did are just absolutely deplorable and disgusting. And yeah, they, the film does do a good job with that, but it does not at all try to make a case for why, and the most important thing, for why Grace would not have murdered him. There is no evidence... Uh, against that, and I think that's really what brings a lot of this film down and makes it very hard to watch at points. The cinematography, though, in this movie is easily some of his worst yet. The whole film, it doesn't even look like a movie. It looks like a, a TV show on, like, the CW or something. It's it's really bad to look at. It just, nothing about it looks like a theatrical film. And uh, I think, and I'm gonna come back to this, because, you know, I, I've introduced it before, but we're going to circle back to the fact that this entire film, not just the editing, not just the filming, the whole thing was done in five days. Whole thing was done five days last month. Not even a couple months ago. Last month. That's when this movie was filmed, and it shows, because there is so many scenes that they easily could have cleaned up. There are so many easy fixes in this movie. There is a video circulating around the internet of the scene where Brescia Webb is talking to uh, Grace, and you see her hair literally changes in that scene. Like, we cut to her, her hair is, like, up, and then it's just down randomly. And stuff like that is so noticeable, and it's something where I don't know how Perry thought that that was a good idea, thought that that was something that he could leave in. How did you not recognize that, like, this is a bad thing? How did you not recognize that that is a really terrible error that you could easily have fixed? There was such an easy way to fix that, and he just chose to be as lazy as possible, and as a result, it's maybe his worst-looking film yet. It's just 
so hard to look at. There's so many scenes that are done in, like, grayscale and things like that. It's also one of those movies where it feels the need to have this stupid contrast of, like, all the scenes in the present are, like, in gray, and then the scenes in the past are, like, all, like, colorful and things like that. And it's like, give me a fucking break. Like, we know what you're trying to do. It's really obnoxious, and I couldn't stand it at all. The score, though, in this movie, holy shit, is it terrible. And Tyler Perry's scores usually aren't that great, but they don't sound this melodramatic usually i mean this film there's rarely a scene where there isn't this overbearing like hallmarky type score playing and it's it's absolute trash i hated every second of it and it took me out of every scene that it was in you could easily remove that music and the movie would be a little bit better and that and honestly that's one of the worst things about this movie it's just it's so hard to watch because of it. The music is just, ah, oh, it's so bad, and I couldn't stand it. I've heard music on incomplete tech that sounds better than this, and that's a site for, for royalty-free music. So, like, oh, what the fuck? I don't, I don't get how the score sounded this bad. I don't get how Tyler Perry made this and thought this was a good idea. There's just so many choices that are constantly just baffling to me, and this is easily one of the biggest ones. The editing in this movie as well is absolutely terrible. This film is maybe the draggiest Tyler Perry film that he's ever done. Because all of his films feel like three hours. But this movie, there's really no reason for it to be two hours, to be honest with you. Um, the first half is mainly just set up. It's introducing us to Grace and this really really boring relationship that she's in. And those scenes, they just, they go on forever. They're so overly cheesy and unrealistic, and I really couldn't stand them at all. And then the second half, that's when the film gets a lot more ridiculous, and it starts to go into a lot more of the more over-the-top soap opera territory. And it just, there's no reason for this movie to be two hours. And most Tyler Perry movies are, and most of them already feel overly long, but this film especially, I have no idea why it's as long as it is. It, it could have easily just been like an hour and 40 minutes, like most Netflix films, and I would have been completely fine with that, um, because I don't at all understand why it needed to be as long as it was here, other than Tyler Perry just wanted to test my patience. And maybe, maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's what I'm starting to realize, that Tyler Perry, he just, he hates people like me. He hates the fact that we criticize him, which I've heard before. He doesn't like the fact that he is criticized but you know what? Someone should. He doesn't take any criticism. He doesn't listen to any of what we have to say, and it's it's just, it's, it's so emblematic of his lack of passion as a director, and I just don't get it. Tyler Perry has been doing this for so long, since the early 2000s, and you would think that he would be getting better. He would learn what he's doing wrong, but it's not getting better. If anything, it's getting worse. And the reason I think why this frustrates me even more is because you look at someone like Martin Scorsese, and I know he's my favorite director, so I'm going to sound a little biased here, but this is a guy that has been doing this for decades, all the way back to, like, the early 1960s, and... Even if you don't like his movies, the one thing we can all collectively agree on is that this man has never once lost his passion for filmmaking. He has always tried to still challenge himself. He has still always found ways to excel as a director. Tyler Perry is the complete opposite of that. He's just stuck in the same sort of zone um, constantly. He's just stuck in the same mindset of not giving a shit. And it really needs to stop. After this movie, I really hope someone puts a stop to it. Because I just don't understand why these films are still continuing to be made. I don't understand why Netflix, of all people, decided to distribute this. I really don't understand it at all. This was a horrible decision, and I like that people are starting to be cognizant of it. I like that people are starting to call him out, because we can't let this happen anymore. We cannot let him keep making movies like this. This is the most disposable, one-note over the top shit ever. It has so many, um, you know, uh, continuity issues. It has so many narrative issues. It has so many terribly written characters. And it has a twist that is so baffling and utterly ridiculous that I just cannot at all uh, recommend this film. I was already hating it, but it just makes it so much worse and really just makes me hope Perry stops making these kind of films. But again, He's the one who keeps flexing about the fact that he's made all these scripts, and 
I don't think he's ever going to stop. I really don't. And it's it's sad because I think if he got a co-writer or he listened to our criticisms, he could become a legitimately great director. But it's pretty clear that he is too egocentric to really care about any of that stuff, to really put any sort of passion into these and to really do anything different. And so because of that, what results is a film that is so disappointingly familiar and so disappointingly similar to every other film he's done that it just leaves you with this very, very bitter taste in your mouth and really just shows how low of a director he really has become. This is easily the worst film that I've seen so far this year, and I'm definitely going to give A Fall From Grace overall a D-. minus. Honestly, if it wasn't for that one performance, it would be a straight-up F. Uh, this is a absolutely unbearable film that I really hope none of you have the misfortune of watching. I know it's on Netflix right now, but please do not watch this movie. It's not worth your time. It's an absolute mess of a film. It's a film that is so disgusting and morally wrong in that way, and I just don't understand the appeal. I've said it before. I know there are fans out there, but I, I just I do not understand the appeal for these movies at all. But either way, guys, that's it for my review of A Fall From Grace. Some of you guys saw this movie, all left your thoughts in it. Oh my god, January just really needs to end right now. I don't know if I can take it anymore. See you guys in my next video, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye. Moving on.